By now, many of our viewers are aware that our co-host of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountain, Hank Schiffer, has passed away. I don't know how far back it is that I've known Hank. I know our paths have crossed many times at various events without our knowledge that each other was at the same event. But I became friends with Hank when Apache Land Studios burnt down and I was in charge of removing the chapel, of the Elvis Presley Chapel that was used in the film Charo and the Audie Murphy barn that was used in Arizona Raiders with uh, Hank's friend Michael Dante. And uh, when the chapel was reconstructed over to the museum, this is when I first remember making friends with Hank because Hank and I and a lady named Cherokee Magnus, who has also passed away, were responsible for putting together the Apache Land Days at the museum. Hank had a lot of attributes that, other than just being a good storyteller, that he helped with uh, that people are not so aware of. Uh, it was he that had worked with newspapers that gave us tons of free advertisings for Apache Land Days. Our first event, 4,000 people showed up to that event. And Apache Land Days did well for several years uh, before they changed the name of it. And uh, our alumni that were movie stars, uh, many passed away and uh, so Apache Land Days sort of passed away too. Hank also wrote a book about Apache Land. It was the entire history of Apache land, and it's just chock full of pictures, and it's sold up at Superstition Mountain Museum, and I think they still have a few copies left. I don't know what the ultimate future of that book will be, but uh, I'm sure you could get a copy if you wanted. It was called Queen and Her Court. Uh, Hank also had a lot of expertise on the computer. He, uh, he saved our, our editors and uh, camera people, Dave and Jane Jones, a lot of trouble ma making our title slides for each of our stories. And I would take the pictures that I needed for my stories and send them to Hank, and he would size them properly to be put on film and enhance them and just whatever it took to make a really good title slide. Anyway, after a period of time, Hank and I both got involved with Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And Hank absolutely loved uh, telling these stories. You know, Tom Collinborn was the most noted historian about the Superstition Mountains than any person living. Not just because of the information that he'd collected, others have collected a lot of information too. The museum has lots of donated information. And Greg Davis is running our library now that's, uh, that's a huge library. But Tom had actually been in the mountains working for Tex Barkley of the Quarter Circle U Ranch in the, in the late 50s. And he knew virtually every square inch of the Superstition Mountain Wilderness. And he had told stories in the newspaper about this for many, many years. So Hank went in and he compiled all those newspaper stories into three separate little books where all the stories were readily available and this is what Hank used to make his stories. Hank had never actually been deep in the wilderness, so it was necessary for us to collaborate quite a bit and get all the place names and proper names uh, sorted out during the story. So Hank and I began weekly meetings on Mondays at a restaurant for breakfast, and we would pour over these stories. Sometimes the research that we did required that we meet more than once a week. And on our last visit, which was October 3rd on a Monday, Hank was effervescent. He was very excited about this story that we were working on. There wasn't any indication that anything at possibly at all was wrong. And we walked to the car together and he made his usual statement be careful, my friend. And uh, Hank and I drove down the road and Hank never made it home. His truck was found parked alongside the road just a few blocks from his house. 
and neighbors said that the truck had been parked there all afternoon. Well, we left about 11 o'clock. So Hank apparently passed away about 11.30 or before, before noon. Uh, we have no word exactly what happened. I'm assuming that it was a heart attack, but we haven't heard anything back yet. And we're going to have a celebration of life next month on the 17th for Hank Schaefer. Anyway, we plan to continue with the stories here, but it's going to be difficult, folks, because even with Hank and I, uh, we, we were having trouble keeping up with this week re weekly release of stories. And most of our speaker, speakers have told their stories and have fell by the wayside due to many causes, illness, uh, age, whatever. But we're going to continue telling stories here, and we just ask you to bear with us that we might not get a story out every week because there's only one guy left. And we're looking for some folks to tell a story, but that's difficult too because, you know, the last few years we have uh, concentrated on trying to separate fact from fiction. And we want to make sure that our speakers don't have a specific agenda to tell. So keep watching folks and we'll, uh, we'll see you down the line.